Uh, my name is Lauren. I'm a biologist with the FWC Fish and Wildlife Research Institute in St. Petersburg. Um, I've worked with a group of people to develop a new app for the agency. It's a mobile application that will be available on Apple and Android devices. Um, currently, we don't have a launch date right now, but we're in the process of uploading it to stores. So when it is available, I'll probably send uh, Maren an email and she can send out an email to you guys so you know when it's really available for download. Um, it will be a free app and users will have the ability to report up to 50 different types of fish or wildlife related incidents in Florida. So I'm just gonna go through a little presentation about why we developed the app um, and I'll go over some of the types of reports you can give. I had planned to do a short demonstration at the end and project the app onto here for you, but um, due to technical difficulties, that's not gonna happen. So if you wanna see the app afterwards, feel free to come get me in the back and I'll give you a little run through. So I'll start. So before I get into the app too much, I just wanna go over a little bit of background information about our fish kill hotline. Have you guys heard of our fish kill hotline before? No, not really. So um, the hotline's been around since the 1990s, and to date we've had about uh, 25,000 reports on it from all over the state of Florida. It was um, set up to receive reports on marine fish kills, abnormal fish, and water discoloration. And I work in the group that receives those reports. It's called the Fish and Wildlife Health Group. And um, we primarily take those kinds of incidents over the phone. Um, what we noticed started to happening in the past few years or so is we're getting a lot of reports of different types of wildlife incidents. So we get reports of nuisance animals, um, bear sightings, sometimes people asking about hunting licenses, really, <coughs> excuse me, really random things that our group doesn't specialize in. And we were having to, you know, it was slowed down the response time by figuring out who was responsible for those reports, contacting those people, and then they would ultimately respond to the caller. So one way we thought would be a good way to kind of navigate um, around these nuisance calls was to develop an application where people can report all of these different types at one central location to the FWC. Currently, FWC doesn't have a function like that. Um, we have our website where you can do ask my FWC and you can ask a directed question to our outreach staff who will then contact you know, the appropriate person to respond to you. So this is really a first for our agency and also other state agencies in the US. Um, other state agencies and do have various different applications where you can you know, access um, hiking trails, fishing regulations, um, it's a lot more informational whereas our app is really designed to receive reports from the public and for us to respond to those reports. So, um, so that's a little bit of background on why the app why it was developed. The app, the name of the app is going to be the FWC Reporter. Um, this is the icon, the graphic that's associated with it, so you'll see that in the um, Apple and Android stores. As I said, it'll be available on both devices. Um, the nice, two nice features about the app are it has access to your camera and your GPS coordinates. So we're able to get more accurate and precise data from our callers. What's happened in the past is, you know, people call up with different incidents, but sometimes they give us the wrong species identifications. Um, sometimes they give us the wrong location information. So having access to those things that are already inherent to your phone will make the um, process to analyze these data points a lot easier and more accurate as well. Uh, the data is also received in real time, so if you're on site of the incident, we'll be able to get accurate date and time location. Sometimes we get reports of people calling into our hotline number and saying, oh, you know, I saw a fish kill a week ago. What's going on? <laughs> so um, it'll be nice to have that feature where people can report it right away. So these are some of the different groups that are involved with um, the app. We also developed this app in-house, so we have the capability to add new research areas as we progress and, you know, if more people are interested in getting the reports, you know, delivered to their office, they can contact us and we can add them in there. But right now we have a couple different groups within FWC. We also have our partners at NOAA, U.S. Coast Guard, and uh, Department of Environmental Protection. So. Um, DHSC, which is, let's see if 
if I can work this. Um, this one down here, they received reports on all of our panthers, bats, gopher tortoises, and different exotic species. Um, we also have our HAB group, which is here. They're, they get the reports on water discoloration and algae blooms. Um, my group is here in the middle, Fish and Wildlife Health. That's where all of our fish kills, abnormal fish reports are gonna come to. And then um, law enforcement is any kind of illegal hunting or fishing activity. Um, also distressed or orphaned wildlife will go there. Then Division of Wildlife is uh, bears, birds, and reptiles, and Division of Marine Fisheries is invertebrates. And then our partner agencies, um, NOAA gets reports of our whales and dolphins. The U.S. Coast Guard it will get reports of any kind of broken or damaged waterway signs, including markers and um, buoys as well. And DEP is any suspected pollution or dumping. So those are kind of the main categories that you can um, report via the app. So some of the benefits that we'll get with the FWC as well as the public will get is a decrease in response times, which we think is really important. Um, people, you know, call in about an incident and they're usually very upset, especially if they've found some kind of injured wildlife. And if they're not reporting it to the right number, it might take hours to days for that to be responded to. So that will also inherently um, enhance our event responses. We're able to get on site a lot faster. We're able to um, assess the situation better. We'll also have a decrease in service failures, hopefully, which is one of the benefits of um, producing this app in-house. We don't have to rely on a third party to um, do all of our updates and you know, add data as it comes. And we'll have automatic updates as well. So some of the benefits for land managers that I was just um, kind of thinking about in my head were you can get in touch with us using the app really quickly, really easily um, for anything that happens in conservation lands or management areas, including animal injuries, illegal hunting activity, nuisance wildlife. If you want to report non-natives, that can be done through the app as well as any kind of um, animal sighting. So if you see panthers, bears, um, all of that can be um, sent to us via the app. So here's where I was going to show you a demonstration of the, what the different, some, a couple, about 10 examples of different reports. Um, I'll just kind of run through them quickly and talk about how that you would be able to. And if you're interested, afterwards you can get me and I'll show you how it really looks on the app. So our first scenario is going to be a fish kill, which you can report via the app. You can um, describe different things that you're seeing associated with the fish kill, if there's an odor. Um, if there's water discoloration, if you see any fishing trauma, anything like that, you can report all of that. You can also add a description and um, access your GPS so you can you know, send us the exact location as well as access your camera. Um, you also have the option not to access your GPS if you know, you're somewhere you don't want us to know about or you, know, you have a special <laughs> hiding spot where you catch all the fish. So, um, you also have that option, you can give us a verbal description instead. You know, we don't want to infringe on anybody's privacy rights. So, um, so there's a couple different options for how you want to relay that data to us. Another example is a wildlife violation. So these kinds of things will go to law enforcement. This picture is actually from an incident that just happened a few weeks ago. It was um, a sea turtle nesting. There was a guy stealing, did you guys hear about that in the news? So um, there was a guy walking down the beach and digging up the sea turtle nests and collecting all those eggs and selling them, you know, on the black market. Um, but uh, luckily there were, you know, sea turtle volunteers who were out on the beach and saw this guy doing it and called law enforcement. And they were able to confiscate all of the eggs he collected, which I think were about two or 300 eggs. And biologists then were able to replant them, so, or rebury them in their nests. Um, so that's one way that, you know, through the app, if you came across something like that, you could easily take a picture or not take a picture if you felt like, you know, you were in danger doing that. And it would go right to our law enforcement department. It's actually through a mechanism called text, um, tip to text, and, or text to tip, and you can add all that information and goes right to our dispatch office. You can also report things like emaciated deer. Um, or deer wasting disease, that's common in more north central Florida. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but if you, you know, see deer that look unhealthy, you can take a picture of them, report that through the app. Orphaned wildlife, you can report that as well. That's gonna go to our um, regional wildlife biologists, which I think we have 
They're set up by, uh, by regional office centers. So I think there's five or six of them in the state. And they'll put you in touch with the right, um, the correct rehabber or, you know, um, trapper or anything like that to get those animals um, taken care of. Also, you can report things like injured bats. So I know we had that bat talk earlier. Um, you know, if you see bats with broken wings or that have fallen out of their roost, you can report that through the app as well. Any non-native, so Burmese python sightings or um, even uh, non-native plants, you can report through the app as well, and you can take a picture along with the GPS. Um, all, the, all the different reports have the same format in the app, so, it's, so once you've done a couple of different uh, reports, it's really easy to navigate and easy to remember how to do it. Then water discoloration, this is um, anything like algae blooms, freshwater or marine, you can send those through the app. And sea turtle nesting, if you've just seen, you know, sightings that you want to report, I think we take sightings for sea turtles, um, we take sightings for bears, and we take sightings for panthers. And with those sightings, where they go is into a geospatial database where, you know, with those, um, those reports come up as, po on, as points on a map and, you know, our researchers can access those and call the caller back if they need to or just have those points for reference. Any nuisance wildlife, this is a big one. We get a lot of calls about, um, I know I did a presentation for Department of Health and they get a lot of calls about that and it seems like a lot of people don't know where these reports go. So, um, so we're you know, getting multiple calls from people who are like, I've called five different numbers and I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to about this, but we can report all of that through the app and they'll put you in touch with the correct um, trapper. And then we also have a section for birds, so you can report um, dying birds, you can report bird sightings of rare species of birds, um, you can report any kind of injured birds, so there's a lot of different options with the different types of situations you can report. And um, this is our group that worked on this app, um, our PI was Richard Flam, we had our various content contributors or myself, um, Teresa Cody, Catalina Brown, and our programmer is Aaron Thompson. So with that, I'll take any questions you might have. So it would seem you're going to need like one or two orders of magnitude more enforcement people when this kicks in. Yeah. You, have you discussed being able to have the dispatcher communicate with either the sheriff or the local police? For instance, I was out on the beach the other day and people were harassing um, skimmers. Mm -hmm. Well, it would, it prob depending on where your law enforcement person is, it's going to take hours to get there, but the local police could show up if they were so inclined. So have you discussed that? Well, so we already have dispatch centers for law enforcement, and I think they do work with their local um, law enforcement when an officer is unavailable. So this should tie, this is going to tie directly into their system that's already running. So these reports will just kind of, you know, like you said, they're just going to increase, but, um, but they already have the capability to do that. I thought I heard you say something about the events occurring on conservation lands. Now, would this apply to lands other than conservation lands? If yes, you see yeah, something anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I was just thinking of different events that you know you guys might run into as land managers. But yeah, conservation lands, private lands, um, private waterways, public parks, state parks. So pretty much, you know, wherever you are that you see something occurring, you'll be able to as long as you're in data range. But I. But even if you just have your, um, a lot of times you'll have your location data available, but maybe, you know, your um, actual Wi-Fi won't be available mm -hmm. or your um, 4G or whatever won't be available. And if your location data is available, you can still fill in the report and it will save all of your entries and then you can send it when you get into data range. And now the really important question. Yeah. Um, when we have folks feeding peanuts to the Jays, does that mm -hmm. qualify? I mean, <laughs> Well, um, it'll accept those reports. I, gu I guess it depends where you would put that in the app. So, um, you know, we don't really have a section for, you know, inappropriate behavior, but... <laughs> nu nuisance humans, right. We don't have yeah. a news. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Great presentation. And this app, I think, will be very beneficial to even, like, all of our volunteers, other people yeah. that want to help us. I have a question. I don't know if it's appropriate. But could you tell me what the budget is for this app? For this app, we had a pretty tight budget. It was um, thirty or 40000 somewhere in that range. And you came in within that range? Yes, we did, yeah. But that was the benefit of doing it in-house. So we had um, 
A couple, FWC has a couple different apps. We also have the Lionfish reporting app and the Gopher Tortoise reporting app. And both of those people went with the same third-party developer. And I think their costs were about three or four times more than ours. Wow. So um, yeah, it was quite a significant difference, which is why we ultimately decided to keep it in-house. And they also had problems with their third party um, that they worked with, where I think that party went bankrupt or something. Seems some people are shaking their heads yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, we wanted to kind of avoid those problems and have the ability and the flexibility to change our app as we need to with um, you know, comments we receive from the public. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>